the uh, the second part of this lecture is about misrepresentation of science and media. Um, we're going to talk about the presence of qualification or level of specificity in the news report, the uncertainty in science, how it usually being presented in the news, the overgeneralization. This is something that I think quite often being presented in the mass media report on science, uh, assimilation of speculation to fact. This is also important for you to note. Um, and contradiction. So the point for you to um, get from this part is actually that um, science is complex. We have discussed about that. That's why people have problem in, in trusting science, people having problem in understanding science. That's why we have problem in science communication. I think um, media play an important role in presenting um, a good science. Um, we're going to learn about that next week and how um, media should, the, the best way to produce um, um, representation of um, science in mass media. So today we're going to look at how all these things, um, this misrepresentation happened in science, happened in mass media on science. Let's start with the presence of qualification or level of, or level of specificity. So basically in science, you usually talk about um, the qualification, I think more about specific information, like, um, for example, the background of information, the methodology, the study limitation, the risk benefit and analysis. So if you should note that in many report or in many stories in mass media, um, this information or this qualification are rather absent. Um, in fact, um, like I, if you remember when I mentioned just now that a research paper, a finding in a research paper does not happen like a revelation. It is derived, man, it is derived by many other previous research. So you need to have historical context um, where this new study actually extends from prior research. However, okay, so, so on your left, on the blue one is a press release. A press release, as, as I mentioned, a, a press release produced by probably a science institution. On the, in the orange part is newspaper, um, what has been reported in this newspaper. So in the press release, usually they will uh, include all these details on the study. Um, for example, it includes the study methodology. So this study, um, this press release is based on a study on breast cancer that is translated into mice. Um, so the scientists able were able, so in this press release it's mentioned that the scientists were able to identify the pattern of cancer cells showing a propensity for, for migrating to the lung center to the lung when a cell line from a breast cancer patient was translated into mice. So basically what happened like, what is um, a breast cancer cell from a patient was translated into mice and then um, it the 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 cancer cells managed to migrate to the lung cell. So um, the most important point that the newspaper usually um, did not highlight is that um, this study is actually, um, this is a not clinical study. Clinical usually uh, involve humans. So this is a study at the lab level. Um, where we use mice. Um, so um, what this study has found, this study is actually, okay, I have to give a background. So this study is actually a study on looking at how newspaper, they look at number of numbers of newspaper um, way of reporting on one study on the breast cancer cell. So they compare about it. So based on that study, so that study is like, so we have number of study here. We have that breast cancer cell study, and we have that paper that reports on how newspaper reports on the press release of the breast cancer cell study. So that study identified that only one newspaper um, mentioned that this breast cancer cell study is actually based on non-human cell. What happened with most of the science stories in newspaper or in the media, they usually don't tell you whether it is in vitro, in vitro, or in vivo, or um, human sample. So in vivo is in cells, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in vitro is within the organism. Uh, is it? Oh, in, in vitro is 
in cells in which in vivo is within the organism. Uh, yeah, I will check on that. Sorry, I have not been doing science work for ages. Um, so um, that's one of the lack in science report. They usually don't um, specify whether the subject of the um, study is what. So because of that, that usually will bring um, a lot of confusion and misunderstanding of certain study. Next is, this is what I have mentioned before, uncertainty in science. So sometimes scientific findings are presented as more certain than they really are. Remember um, that uh, story in the news media are rather in narrative storytelling, whereas, whereas in science it's more no, no real uh, end and setting point. So because of that, uh, sometimes scientific findings are presented as more certain than they really are. Sometimes the, uh, the uncertainty of research finding is stressed in science news to attract audience attention or create a controversy on it, in other words, to make it more newsworthy. So here an example um, in the um, research paper, it says here, or maybe in the press release, it says here, we favor the hypothesis that sex differences in achievement in an attitude toward mathematics result from superior male mathematical ability which may in turn be related see to greater male mathematical ability in spatial tasks um that which may in turn be related means it's so uncertain it's not it's not so uncertain it, it highlight uncertainty there whereas if you look at the what happened in the news media it says here sex differences in achievement in an attitude to a mathematics result from superior male mathematical ability so all that which may in turn be related uh, the very um words uh, highlighting uncertainty has been um, omitted in the news um, report so you can see how um, um, the media usually tend to give you certain certain facts because if they give you such uncertainty of facts they will uh, like people will be like uh really um so what's the point of telling us this but that's how science is it's uncertain um so that's why it's very important for you to listen or to read news and see how they actually present the fact the science um next is over generalization or simplification this is something that's very common news story sometimes over generalize scientific findings a form of simplification often frequently used so if you're a very good science student you usually won't say um, over generalization you will usually say some due to certain circumstances so you say due to certain factors or you may say that most of the time or you might probably say sometimes you will use all this kind of uncertain word because you know it's not what happened like in the real life over generalization is just not something that often happened but it's often happened and but we usually do it in our life anyway um this is university press release so you am um, i think this is michigan university if i'm not mistaken so you am scientists say fuse genes trigger the development of prostate cancer the principal investigator of study, of study comments on the significance of their most recent finding. The data in our study provides tantalizing evidence that gene fusion is the causative agent, the initiating event in prostate cancer. Um, so provides tantalizing evidence. It doesn't tell you exact that like it, it causes um, the prostate cancer, but it gives you and somehow evidence. So however, in use, you can see that finding identify like the origin of prostate cancer. Okay, they use the word uh, likely origins. That's that's okay. But then um, origins of prostate cancer is different than the causative agent, the initiating event. It, it has different meaning. Uh, next point, researchers have found a set of genes, okay, that may play a key role in prostate cancer, a discovery that doctors are hailing as a major breakthrough that changes the way we think about the genetic roots of the disease. So it's funny how the word tantalizing changed to all this hailing as a major breakthrough that changes the way we think. So, you know, um, that's how, again, news always want to create something 
controversial, interesting. So that's why they have to use all these very newsworthy word, very interesting word. Whereas in science, it's really it's really downplaying all this controversial and downplaying all this newsworthiness, you know. Um, so yeah, you can see how they they somehow overgeneralize and simplify all this. They, they they omit the word evidence that gene infusion is the causative agent in the initiating event. If you really study how um, the cancer actually, I mean, the cause of cancer, you can see there are, it can cause, in the, it can happen in DNA, it can happen in the um, cell, what do you call that? The cell generation um, process. It can happen in the, mRNA can happen in the DNA, can happen in the sequence. But then here, they just, you know, they just simplified likely origin, finding, identify likely origins of prostate cancer, a set of gene may play. So yeah, it's something that you need to, you know, um, look forward when you read any new science story.